All right, and sitting down with us today is Regan Katz from the Ottawa's newest pro baseball team, the Ottawa Titans. Regan, thanks very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, pretty big uh, news. You guys just had the logo reveal and the name reveal just within the last couple of days there. Uh, how did you guys ultimately settle on the name Titans and, and the design for the team? Uh, truthfully, we, uh, we, we put up a name in the team contest. Um, mm -hmm. We had uh, an overwhelming uh, number of names from the uh, uh, overly creative um, to the uh, historically uh, relevant. Uh, and uh, so we went through them all. We, the only mandate I think we had were, were twofold. One, we wanted to be uh, bilingual or at least accepted on, on, uh, in both languages. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we weren't reviving the past. Um, we were reviving passes and past teams that may not have made it. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a renewal or revival. This is a fresh, clean slate. So uh, taking those out uh, right in the top of the pile was uh, the, the Titans. And uh, it's, it's not an uncommon name, but uh, it, it's not uh, in baseball and certainly not in baseball in Ottawa from the professional level. So uh, it was a pretty easy choice and uh, easy to say, has a ring, <laughs> it fit the yeah. bill. Awesome. Awesome. Were, were, were there any, uh, I mean, ones that you maybe dismissed right away as far as entries, but gave you a little bit of a chuckle that you, that you can share with us? There, there were, you know, what, there were some really good ones. And, and I mean, they weren't going to fly, but they definitely gave us a chuckle and, uh, and, and showed us that we're, we're in the right environment. Uh, I mean, when, when you put it out there, we're, we're fun people. We, we like to laugh at ourselves. We like to do things that are a little kooky for, for lack of a better word. And uh, so, so seeing some of the responses, I mean, uh, what, one of my favorites that actually stood out, it wasn't going to win, but it was the uh, the Ottawa A's uh, EH. And I thought, you know what? Uh, yeah, we're proudly Canadian in a, in a league that has lots of American uh, centers. And uh, this, could, this could be a lot of fun. Um, we, we don't mind joking with ourselves here, but we don't really reflect on it all that much. So that one stood out. Um, you know, uh, there were some, some food references, which are plentiful in baseball. You know, you, you get south enough, you've got the Savannah bananas and the Macon bacon being baseball teams. So I, I thought for a moment that maybe one of the, one of those might stand out. It wasn't the name that rang like a Savannah banana or, or Macon bacon, but, uh, you know, I'm not even sure what rhymes with Ottawa, but, uh, uh, but there were, there were some, some neat ones in there. And then they certainly, like I said, gave us, uh, the, the right energy to realize this is the demographic that we, we can have some fun with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's the beauty of minor league baseball, right? It is, it's, it gives you a little more freedom to play around with some stuff there. Yeah. And, and, and that's truly what it's about is, is having those freedoms, being able to laugh at yourselves. Uh, you know, we, uh, we pride ourselves uh, with our, you know, our, one of our other teams is the, Win the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. And I mean, there we pride ourselves on our costume days and our dress ups and, and being different and, uh, and, and having a laugh and uh, sometimes with, sometimes at, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. So uh, trying to bring that energy in, it, it's, it's important. And that is what minor league baseball is all about, you know, to, yeah. to everybody. The, the, the baseball is important. We want to win. And that's what we're out there to do. Uh, but uh, most people are coming for the fun environment that surrounds it. And that isn't always the baseball. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And, and maybe even on that note there, just tell us a little bit about the league that you guys are competing in and sort of the level of competition that you guys are at there. So if someone who might not be familiar with sort of the minor league baseball system, where do you guys sort of fall in the pecking order there? So we are uh, a member of the Frontier League. Um, up until 2021, the Frontier League was an independent league, meaning that they didn't have to answer to any uh, higher power or MLB or, or anything like that. Um, now, uh, MLB has taken with its new shuffles and, uh, it's big 120 and whatnot has, uh, has re realized partnerships with the independent leagues, uh, and in doing so the frontier league is now a partner league to MLB. What that means is that we're now, uh, openly sharing data and, uh, you know, it's always been our goal to see players move up. I mean, it's, uh, the, the frontier league classifies itself in the, you know, the, the single a level as far as players go. So a player that gets picked up by a major league would go into their single a, or maybe move up to their double a affiliate. Um, and uh, so that's, that's where they fall as far as caliber of player. Um, but now with this new realization where uh, MLB has you know, cut a bunch of teams said every single team is going to have four, a triple a, a double a, a high a, a low a, um, it, it's really aligned the Frontier League in a, in a great position and, and the other independent leagues to know exactly where their footing is. Um, now we're sharing stats. We expect to see more players picked up and signed and, and moving up the realm. And, and, and that's really what it's about. We're, we're, we play to win versus minor league that plays to develop. That's mm -hmm. the difference. Um, no team is going to call us and say that that pitcher can only throw 20 pitches today. Never going to happen. We're here to win. If, if his arm has 100 in it, he's going to throw 100. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's what we're after. 
Um, but uh, the, the partnership really is good because we'll see a lot more players getting signed, moving up because we're openly sharing what they're capable of uh, and giving them more opportunities to demonstrate it. Yeah, yeah. So what used to maybe be a rarity in the past for some of the local Ottawa teams of actually seeing, you know, players that used to play here make it to the major league ranks or even the AAA ranks there will hopefully be more of a common occurrence then. Yeah, it, it was happening, but it was seldom. Now, now I, I, I would go so far as to say it's likely to become common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So what even was the process like as far as, you know, working with the city and then working obviously with the league to make sure that this franchise became a reality for the 2021 season? Uh, it's been a process, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the former team that was there, uh, had some, uh, some lease issues and, uh, you know, and, and some shortcomings and, uh, obviously, uh, simply ceased to exist. They lost their lease and therefore they lost their membership in the league. Um, their league then ceased to exist. And then the remaining members joined the frontier league, which made it a natural fit for, for us looking in. Um, we'd considered it as a, as an opportunity when it was the champions and kind of just backed off things. It, timing wasn't right things weren't going the way we thought they should be and uh it's not always easy to fix something as opposed to start something so uh we took a step back and mm -hmm. uh then uh we were approached actually and uh and then partnered up with oseg and uh and said you know maybe uh maybe we should give this a more serious look now that there's a vacant park and uh we, we know Ottawa is a great market um there's certainly some opportunities for league in fact the the atlantic league the frontier league there, there were options to consider and, and see where we wanted to go um, and, and that's always nice to have rather than begging somebody to take you. <laughs> so, uh, um, so we started the conversations with the city and, uh, the city was obviously, uh, looking for a tenant and wants a baseball team. And, uh, so we just started opening the conversations and then the more we had, the more promising it looked, um, choosing the frontier league was, uh, the right choice for, for their geographics, um, and certainly the right choice for the, for the caliber of ball that, uh, that we need to see there. Um, so, uh, that, and that's why we chose the frontier. Also the fact that it's, it's a growing league, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the, uh, major league baseball changes. Uh, there are many, many teams who are now looking for a league to play in and, uh, the, the natural fit for many of them, much like Ottawa will be likely to be the frontier league. So, uh, to be in a growing league helps to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I suppose the sort of elephant in the room as far as Ottawa baseball is concerned is there have been many iterations of, of a professional team in the past, right? Whether it's going all the way back to the Lynx or the Champions or uh, the, the Rapids, the Fat Cats, everything else in between, right? Uh, what are some of the things that you guys as an ownership group are hoping to do differently to give this Titans team some real lasting power and really put down some roots here in the community? The... A, a number of things we've done differently, right, all the way from the operations and then front office all the way forward. But I mean, from the fan perspective, we're, uh, we're proud, we're, we're not shy to say that we're about the fun and entertainment that surrounds the baseball, the, the baseball test is very much secondary. I mean, promise me we won't tell the players, but it's, uh, you know, we're, we're here to put on a really good time, make it fun for the whole family. I, I don't, if, whether you're two or 92, it should be the same level of excitement and the same level of fun. Um, there happens to be a baseball game in the background. Uh, I mean, if, if every fan walked out of there saying, I don't know if we won or lost, but I can't wait to come back, I would call that a win. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, so I mean, that, that's, we're, we're not shy of it. It's, uh, I mean, I, I, I probably overstate it and maybe too proud, but uh, that's really what sets us as being different. Um, we will put a winning team on the field. That, that is our goal. Um, we, we will do whatever it takes to be as competitive as possible and, and win um, because championships are what it's all about. But yeah. uh, the the entertainment level will also be a winner <laughs> and, uh, and and that's really what we're after um making it accessible and making it pleasant for everyone is 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 the goal uh i'll be the first to admit though everything that we'd like to do doing during a pandemic is a lot tougher <laughs> than just a startup's hard yeah. startup during a pandemic seems impossible um and trying to pull off everything we want to do in, in the first year is going to be incredibly difficult um so we're gonna have growing pains uh, and uh, and then we're gonna need some confidence but uh we're also here long term. This this isn't. Uh, I mean, some might set out to make it work and then turn it. Some might set out to do this and that. But uh, the goal here is to make this vibrant and successful and in perpetuity for as far as we can tell. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, even on that note, there. I mean, obviously, lots changes day to day, week to week with COVID. There, you never really can predict too far into the future. But as far as how it sort of stands today, what sort of guidance has the league given as far as what the plan for the 2021 season is, you know, is it going to be no fans whatsoever? Is it limited capacity or is it something else altogether different? So looking at things 
today, it's tough to say for anyone. Uh, I, I mean, uh, in, in some marketplaces, there's a full lockdown and others, there's, you know, a maximum of hundred outdoors, some places are at 50% capacity. Um, we, every team in the league is presented to the league where they stand as far as what will it take from my uh, authoritative government body as far as a, a number for me to open my doors and, and call this a season. So uh, every team has put out theirs, you know, uh, we're fortunate. Uh, I don't need all 10,000 seats that are in our CGT. So uh, mm -hmm. if, if the province says that we're allowed 25%, that's a win. I, I can make that work, you know, and, and, and there are probably some numbers even lower than that, that I can, uh, at least for this year, get up and going and feel pretty good about. Um, the uh, Would I like 50%? Of course I would, <laughs> but, but I can make I can make it work below that. So I think every team is a little bit different um, on what their threshold number is, um, but the league is aware of them and we all want to get there. Uh, for planning purposes, I think most of us are looking at where were we in September? If, if, if I could, if, if May, when the season rolls around, looks like whatever my authoritative body was, uh, was telling me in September, could I make that work? And, uh, and the majority of the league can. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we just need to get through the two spouts of typical flu season and, and the everything else that's making this thing, you know, thrive rather than, uh, than die off. And uh, that combined with the, the vaccines and everything else that's coming out, I'm more and more optimistic every day that there's light at the end of this tunnel. Um, but it's definitely in a very dark tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Only a couple of balls in the air. Eh? It's not much of a juggle. I, I've, I've allocated far too much time to contingency planning <laughs> uh, in every way. You know, okay, if I'm allowed 500 people, can I do this? Uh, if I'm allowed, you know, if there's cohorting, do I do that? And so it's, uh, and, and I mean, there's a lot to consider. And, uh, but I, I do have enough plans now that I just need to get the right. Uh, rule and I don't know which plan to pull. <laughs> yeah, 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 version one or version 139. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm well through the alphabet, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but whatever it is, we'll be ready. Yeah. So I, I mean, even if we do get sort of that doomsday worst case scenario where they just say nope, no fans. Uh, are there any you know local broadcasts or even you know you guys doing live streams of the game that you, you've explored as far as engaging fans so that they can sort of still stay engaged with the team in the first year? Yeah. It, at this level, if if there if we can't have fans, we won't, we won't play. That, that if, if the government says that we can't open the building to, to live fans, we're going to need to wait a season until we can. Um, that this this design, this makeup, this uh, at this level, you, you just you, we're there for the fans. Yeah. It's uh, there's no there's no big TV deals paying us in the back room. Yeah. There's no radio deals aren't what you survive on. Um, we, we haven't even branded ourselves yet, so I can't even expect to sell a jersey until I've had a guy in the field. <laughs> so yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so no, we, we need to open our doors. That, that's, yeah. that's our threshold. Um, so if, if we can't, we'd end up having to wait a year. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure that I, I, I could live with it. Uh, I wouldn't like it, though, uh, but, but, but I, could, I could live with it. Uh, and we would just wait till 2022 if that's really what they say. Um, I think there's enough optimism, though, in other provinces as much as even in, in some of the states in the u.s that uh, that that won't be the case but could june look better than may maybe could you know is, is may going to be better than april yep <laughs> so um we're yeah it's possible that the league might look at the big picture and say you know what we need to shorten our schedule or we need to start later and and if, if that comes to be then so be it yeah but yeah no, no fans i yeah we uh our Winnipeg team played as a road team uh, this year in order to make sure that the league was able to go on and stay south of the border. And uh, I, I, I'm not so sure I'd want to do that again. Yeah. Well, knocking on every piece of wood around, <laughs> yeah, vaccines work and <laughs> they get deployed properly there. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anybody who hasn't had uh, enough of this. So, uh, you know, I, I, I frequently make the reference that I'm, it's, it's Groundhog Day. Every day I put my head out hoping it looks different, but it's still the same. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, what stage of, you know, recruitment are, are you guys sort of at right now? Is the front office and the coaching staff set or, and you're more focused on players or are you still piecing together quite a few different aspects of the team? Uh, coaching staff is set. Uh, we, we found a great seasoned manager in, in Steve Brook, who's got great experience in, in the Frontier League and then has put together a, a phenomenal winning record. Um, he brings along a coaching staff with him that... Uh, I'm starting to get a sense wouldn't wouldn't help anybody else. So uh, so it was great to get a package deal. Um, okay. He's been as far as recruitment goes, he has been all over. Um, we have some uh, signings to announce that are coming up. Um, some are some really exciting stuff. Some uh, some content that we're really proud of. And uh, so no, the, the recruitment side for the team it's going really really well. Um, and uh, we're uh, and we've got plenty more time to come about, especially with uh, MLB doing what it's doing. So uh, there'll be a lot more on the uh, open door roster. Um, 
Then uh, the front office, we've just uh, made our first announcement of uh, some, some recognized faces to come in and start leaving our office and uh, kind of done our picking and choosing from some of the teams of the past. And uh, we're going to continue building that up and uh, hopefully not too late into the new year, uh, that first month there, uh, certainly by February, we'll, uh, we'll have a functional office and uh, be out there pushing what we can push, uh, hoping that the government's on board with us having some fans in the building. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, what has scouting even been like dur during COVID here, especially considering a lot of the leagues uh, around the country haven't even been running or have been running in such a modified capacity that you're almost looking at one year, two year plus old game tape of some of these players? It's um, fortunately for me, uh, our manager does all of it with his coaches, so I don't have yeah. to get involved. But uh, admittedly, it's probably been a little bit easier in that most players went without playing last year so they're eager uh and i mean they're they'll, they'll take the first person to make them an offer uh you know is uh and, and so you're actually getting some potentially above average player um right now who's happy to sign and then going to come and you know help you bolster your roster and, and be really great the risk being though that you're likely to lose them if somebody else comes along and, and wants to you know offer them more or uh or move them up the ladder uh, so to speak and uh so yeah, you, you can get some great stuff today, um, but your roster may not look anything like it does today when May rolls around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's, 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 it's quite exciting to see. Um, now taking that into account, we also have to look at the fact that uh, with all the border closures and everything else, it's harder to recruit. I mean, North America is not so bad. We can, you know, we can bring in from uh, the US uh, and obviously anywhere in Canada is not, not a challenge, but uh, there used to be a, Fair number of latin players you bring over you can't get them a visa, work visa for the u.s or canada right now due to lockdowns so uh until that goes up we can't even sign them uh, and that's where some of the most exciting talent can be mm -hmm. uh, and certainly said in the days of old that's uh that's, that's where you find those amazing uh pitchers or hitters who every every player has a flaw but uh most of them if they're playing professionally they have some pretty good assets too so <laughs> uh, when they when they come out of latin america you, you get to see pretty quick where the uh where those assets are and uh, and they're fun to watch yeah, yeah. So, I mean, w one thing that's always created a little bit of a buzz uh, uh, around some of the previous incarnations of the team there was uh, that they would sometimes do the, the open tryout day and you'd get this wide variety of, you know, all the way from I, he's just living the dream coming out here to some genuine prospects that you might see there. Yeah. Assuming that, you know, you can actually get that off the ground and actually gather people together. Is that something you guys might be looking to do come the spring or we will without a doubt in future years have have an open tryout so to speak or or at least have the opportunity for local talent to come uh show our manager what they can do um with the current rules and guidelines around social distancing and uh and, and whatnot and that we'll probably be having most of our players in the hub mentality and and for the season um it's highly unlikely that we'd even be able to even if we wanted to um but uh Perhaps there'll be an opportunity to send our, our manager out to do some uh, local scouting. Um, but yeah, an open tryout is going to be really challenging. Now the league has them uh, and hosts yeah. them, and uh, and our manager will go out to uh, some tryouts, but they're not going to be in Ottawa. And uh, I mean, sorry, they're not in Ottawa. Uh, whether or not we can have one, <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm assuming at this point no. Um, but if uh, if they change those rules, absolutely will. I mean, uh, there, there's nothing better than finding local talent, and as you said you get to see it all yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I've, I've seen some guys in their late 40s come out and keep up with the guys in their 20s couldn't hit but but they can yeah. run so, so you never know what you're gonna see yeah yeah so i mean what is the one thing that you personally are most excited about with this team kicking off in 2021 here i um i i love the vibrance and energy that uh, that i mean it, it's still early for us that we're getting out in the community and announcing ourselves and presenting but uh but the buzz and the feedback we're getting is uh, there's some really great fans. I mean, I, I was one of the great people, but they're, they're great sports fans in Ottawa. And, and I mean, I, I should go further. They're great sports fans in Gatineau. I, uh, and so I'm having a great time with it. It's, uh, and uh, I just, I, I feel great about the energy. Um, and uh, I, I mean, if, if I had doubts, especially doing this during a pandemic, uh, they're helping me kick those doubts to the side. And, uh, and, and that's positive. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if people wanted to get more information, whether it was about the team or the league you guys are playing in, where should they go to either follow you or, or get that info? Uh, you'll find us on social media, uh, Ottawa underscore Titans. Um, you'll uh, find us uh, in, I mean, our, our sorry, website, uh, ottawatitans.com. Uh, the Frontier League is certainly worth checking out. Uh, they do a great job. And like I said, it's, it's growing. So uh, it's getting better and better. 
Um, and uh, we're just looking forward to start doing some uh, announcements. So uh, as far as rosters and then whatnot coming up, uh, we, we've got some things we're pretty excited about. We'll, uh, we'll do a few now before uh, the holidays. And then uh, once the new year hits, that's, uh, that's a fresh, clean slate to us. And that's when we're going to hit the ground running. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Well, any final words to potential future Titans fans out there about what to expect? Uh, we're going to have great quality entertainment. We're going to have awesome baseball, uh, and, uh, we're going to do our best to bring home a championship and hope you'll be there to see it. Awesome. Regan, thanks so much for sitting down with us. We wish you guys all the best. And like we said before, knock on wood that, uh, we'll actually be able to put some butts in seats, uh, come 2021 there for you. You tell me how many, I'll make sure we do it safely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.